In spite of the crush of demand for parts and manufacturing of all things e-bike, Rad Power Bikes was still able to introduce an all-new bike, the Rad Mission 1. It sheds features like a front shock, an LCD control panel, a shifter, gears, and derailleur, so they could decrease its price while also decreasing the maintenance required to keep the bike in tune. They kept important stuff like the Tektro Ares mechanical disc brakes, the half twist throttle, cadence sensing pedal assist, and they even still include a headlight and a tail light, which are parts that are often left off of other budget oriented metro bikes. The fenders, the rack, and the kickstand that you see here are not standard with the Rad Mission 1, but I asked Rad Power Bikes to include them with this bike they sent me for evaluation because I figured that they would be very popular accessories chosen by buyers of this bike. Rad Mission 1 is so named because it is the result of a design mission to produce a high quality e-bike built to Rad Power Bike standards for as low a price as possible. At only $10.99 MSRP shipped free, the Rad Mission 1 is the least expensive bike ever offered by Rad Power, a price point hit by reducing features, not quality. This is the mid-step frame with a top tube that sweeps down to connect to the middle of the seat tube. A high step is also available, but with a 31 inch standover, it's better left for tall riders who prefer a more traditional look to the frame. With a 30 inch inseam, I prefer the much reduced standover height of this mid-step. The Rad Mission 1 is available in five different colors including this red, which actually looks a bit orange like you see here depending on the light. All color combos evoke a bit of a retro feel, throwing back to the stripped down 10 speeds of the 70s and 80s that couriers and college kids would rely on for urban transportation. Like many of those modified bikes, the Rad Mission has only one speed, which is why it lacks a gear shifter on the swept back handlebars. It also lacks a rear derailleur, but in its place is a spring-loaded chain tensioner that improves reliability as the chain naturally stretches with use. A Z7 chain ties the 16-tooth freewheel to the 50-tooth chain ring, complete with dual-sided aluminum chain guards. No worries about stretching cables or adjusting a derailleur, and you'll never lose your chain off the chain ring with this drivetrain. 170 millimeter cranks end in composite pedals with chrome molly axles. The rear hub motor peaks at 500 watts watts and 50 newton meters of torque. It's not meant to provide all of the power to get you up hills, but it does make them a lot easier on your legs. The 48 volt, 10 and a half amp hour, 504 watt hour battery pack is made with Samsung cells, just like Rad's other battery packs. It is smaller and lighter than Rad's standard battery pack, but it still delivers 25 to 45 miles of range due to the 50 pound weight of the bike and the greatly reduced rolling resistance of its 27 and a half inch by 1.95 inch Kenda contact tires. These tires still have the K-Shield puncture resistant liners of the beefier Kendas found on other Rad Power bikes, but they're meant to operate at up to 65 PSI. Generous rain grooves mean these have great traction in wet or dry conditions, just as you'd expect for a commuter bike designed in the Pacific Northwest. Power is controlled by a no-frills LED control panel. Indicator lights show battery level, pedal assist setting, and whether or not you have your lights on. An upgraded LCD panel is available for those who want more info like current speed and total miles ridden, but I think most buyers will be perfectly satisfied saving the $99 by sticking with the stock control panel. Rubber grips replace the synthetic leather grips found on other Rad Power bikes, but I think many will find them to be both grippier and more comfortable. A half twist throttle is tucked into the right grip, giving you access to full power when you need it regardless of the pedal assist setting. The battery powers a standard headlight and tail light, which also functions as a brake light when either brake lever is pulled. The brake levers also have integrated motor shutoff switches, cutting power to the motor to ensure the brakes don't have to work against it regardless of the throttle position or active pedal assist. 180 millimeter discs are grabbed by Tektro Ares mechanical brakes, a staple found across the Rad Power line. The Rad Mission 1 does not come with the kickstand shown here, but at only $15, I see it as an essential accessory for anyone who doesn't want to have to find a wall or a tree or a bike rack to lean their bike on before dismounting. 
I always like to show full assembly with e-bike reviews, but with the Rad Mission, there isn't much to show. I finished the job using only the included tools in a very casual 18 minutes following the video Rad Power Bikes has posted to their YouTube channel. This is an area where Rad Power Bikes excels. Their bikes are always packed exactly the same way they're shown in their assembly video, and you're never guessing which fastener goes where as the video makes it super clear. In fact, watching the assembly video is a great first step after placing an order as you'll see how easy putting a rad mission together really is. If you're still not interested in assembling the rad mission yourself, any competent bike shop will be able to do it for you. Not all bike shops are willing to assemble bikes that didn't sell you though, so you might have to call around. In many markets throughout the US and Canada, Rad even offers white glove assembly and delivery, though that runs about $250 depending on where you live. The first challenge, of course, for me with any bike is getting up this hill out of my neighborhood. And I am gonna pump this up to max pedal assist. Oh yeah, one of the things that I notice is this bike, when you turn it on, the lights automatically come on. So I just turn them off, save some battery. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> you know, this is a single speed bike and the gearing is set for cruising on the flats. It's not set for climbing, but the 500 watt motor puts out 50 Newton meters and that's been plenty to help my legs get up hills like that. <laughs> this is not a trail bike but it is a metro bike and it is not uncommon in metropolitan areas whether you're in a park like this which is in Raleigh or you're on greenways for you to end up on dirt pathways on crushed granite roads like this and the tires that are specced with the rad mission are up to the task if this were really wet and muddy, I would absolutely prefer knobbies. But the main thing that I noticed riding this bike on this path, and you might be able to see it in the camera, is the lack of suspension. Not just the front fork, but it doesn't have that built-in cushion of big fat tires. The brakes are the always fine 180 millimeter Tektro Aries mechanical discs. Yes, hydraulic brakes are better brakes, but I've been riding multiple e-bikes, not just rads, with these exact same disc brakes, and they are more than adequate for the vast majority of riding that anybody's gonna do on a bike like this. Oh, I'm gonna get some throttle. Full throttle gives you full power from the motor no matter what your pedal assist setting is. And that's my preference. Not all bikes work that way, but rads do. Even at zero, if I hit the throttle, I get the motor. But I'm gonna set this to pedal assist two. I've got these tires inflated to 45 PSI. They go to 65 PSI max pressure. That would be for if you're trying to get a lot of range out of the battery and you are on pavement. It's also smart to really pump up the pressure if you're dealing with things like potholes because that helps you to avoid pinch flats from the tire basically collapsing down onto the rim when you hit something hard like, a, like the edge of a pothole. But 45 PSI, it's still firm it still gets me good range out of the battery, but it gives me a little bit more cushion. It gives me a little bit more traction in looser terrain like this. One of the things that is really amazing about this bike is how quiet it is. The motor is so quiet, even compared to Rad's 750 watt peak motor. It's really, really quiet compared to the 750 watt motor that's in other brand of e-bikes. 
Additionally, because the chain isn't running through a derailleur, it's running through a chain tensioner, but it doesn't have to get pushed across different cogs in the back. And so the sprocket in the back has only standard teeth. It doesn't have any chain lifting teeth or chain dropping teeth, which have to take up some of the teeth in a cog set in a freewheel in the back when you're gonna be shifting from one to the other. And those tend to be a little bit noisy even when you're not shifting. This doesn't have any chain noise. All right, here's where I would be downshifting, but instead I'm just gonna grab some throttle. And while my turnover, my cadence, isn't as high as I'd like with my legs, the motor takes a lot of the pressure off of my knees, and it actually makes this quite comfortable. The combination of the surface and the climbs on this part of my test route is beyond what most people are gonna be doing with this bike, but it's really neat to see that it can handle it. I wasn't so sure about the polymer pedals, but the teeth on them actually grip into the soles of my shoes way better than the metal teeth on the Welgo pedals that are normally spec'd on e-bikes. The Kenda contact tires are definitely pavement oriented, but they still have the puncture resistant K-Rad liner, I think is what they call it, that will really help resist flats from sharp rocks and gravel and other little pokey things that I might run over on this trail. I asked Rad Power Bikes to ship this bike that they sent me for demo with the fenders and the rack because I knew that they would be popular options, not necessarily in combination, but individually or in combination. And I will say that I'm not a fan of the look of the fenders, but they are just a practical feature that I think many buyers of the Rad Mission would benefit from. They're not gonna just protect your legs from puddles, from splashing, but on a trail like this where it's actually dusty, it helps keep the dust off of your pant legs, off of your socks, out of your shoes. It's actually uh, an often ignored benefit of having fenders. Yeah, so even in loose stuff like these pine needles, these tires are just fine. They don't dig in like knobbies, but it's not like I'm riding on ice or anything like that. Now we're coming on to what this bike is really optimized for. This is the majority of what you're gonna see for metropolitan riding, some kind of pavement. This is a greenway, so it's designed for bicycles, roller skates, roller blades, runners, people walking their dog. This is a bit of a grind of a climb, but I've got it in level two pedal assist, not having any issues. My legs are working, but not really hard. I'm intentionally trying to take this casually as if I were wanting to go into work and not be sweating. The grips on this bike have the same basic shape as the synthetic leather grips that are on other Rad Power bikes and on a lot of e-bikes in this price category. But they're rubber, they're, they're grippier. And I might even say they're a little bit more cushioned. It's, a, it's still a hard rubber, but it is rubber. The LED control pad doesn't have a readout for speed or odometer, <laughs> but I rode bikes for decades without that. And even towards the end there, when I did have a speedometer and odometer, I had to put it on myself. The bikes didn't come with that. So I don't really miss that because I'm not doing this to, to see if I can get my speed up, my average speed up over the same course after repeated runs like I did 20 plus years ago when I was racing Ironman distance triathlons. It's just not the kind of riding that I'm doing at all anymore. 
this is the kind of thing where I really notice the 50 pounds of this bike versus 70 pounds of other e-bikes that I ride a lot. It's really sporty in how it feels compared to them. 50 pounds is still heavy for a bike, but it's not too bad for an e-bike at all. I also noticed that even though this has a giant battery on the down tube, I get less looks of any kind riding this than I do riding a fat tire e-bike. People will look at me like I've got a third eye or like I'm riding a motorcycle on their walking path. Okay, so now we're gonna bump this up to level four pedal assist. Again, this is headwind, but we're on the road. Right there's 20 miles an hour. I could feel the power gently coming off as I get close to what's probably 20 miles an hour. And then when I slow down, the power gently kicks back on. That's another thing that I like about how Rad Power Bikes has their pedal assist program. It's not a sudden stop to the power when you hit your max speed, and it's not a, an unexpected kick in the pants when your speed drops down to where pedal assist kicks back in. I really like the standover height of this mid-step. I've got a 30 inch inseam and a 31 inch standover height on the high step would be just too much. Okay, let's get full throttle through this intersection. Easy day. Coming up on a speed bump, I'm gonna actually slow down because this has no fork. Oh, guess I'm going to get passed by that guy. <laughs> if I were braver, I could bunny hop those, but I'm 51 years old, which is the age where I could still do stuff like that. <laughs> but the cost, if I mess it up, becomes a, a lifetime ordeal. <laughs> it's a life sentence. While this doesn't have suspension, the 27 and a half inch wheels do make it a lot easier to roll over these cracked areas and, and pavement. You're gonna feel the bumps, but it doesn't upset the bike. After riding e-bikes exclusively that have at least seven speeds and at least 750 watts of peak power i wasn't so sure that i'd be excited about this bike with its 500 watt peak motor and single speed but i get it i get the appeal of a single gear and my concerns about starting out from a stop especially at intersections about climbing the hills that i climb nothing's been an issue The other thing I like about the mid-step is it does have a top tube. It's not as high as on a high-step bike, but it means that this bike isn't floppy when I'm standing at an intersection like this. Whoop, time to go. Put on the throttle, hop up into the pedals. Okay, I'm gonna use throttle this time. And same deal, that's 20 miles an hour right there. The motor's kicking off very smoothly and uh it might be a while before i slow down yeah the with these narrow firmer tires and a little bit more aggressive seating position i don't have as much drag i do notice actually with this control pad that i have to look for the plus and minus buttons especially since i always wear gloves this is a safety thing if i crash this will help reduce the amount of damage I get on my hands. It's not a big deal, but it is something I notice the difference between this control pad and the, and the pedal assist controls on most other e-bikes where I don't even have to look. About this far into my ride, 
it's when I start to notice that the saddle that they have on the Rad Mission is a bit svelte. And I've done tons of riding in saddles that are uh, this form factor, but you know, I, I'd spend $150 easy just on a saddle because I spend so much time in it, even though it was teeny like these. This is not a $150 saddle. And it is noticeable, even for a guy like me that, that has a bit of an iron butt from doing this for decades, I, I notice it. I understand why they spec it. And, and I think for metropolitan riding, where you're riding from point A to point B with a purpose, you're not necessarily gonna be in the saddle for an hour straight. So it's not gonna necessarily be an issue. But if you're planning on spending a lot of time in any one ride on this, I would think that a saddle upgrade would be in order. And I don't necessarily mean into something that's gigantic like a like a granny bike <laughs> bicycle seat as they call them but just a a better built road bike seat okay i'm gonna do a bit of this climb without pedal assist and uh it's not so bad it's a a little more pressure on the pedals than i normally like because I like to use a torque advantage of a, of a low gear and a high turnover. Okay, now we're getting to where I'm gonna put it back at pedal assist level two. That's all I've really needed. It has four levels of pedal assist and then zero. But I really only need pedal assist level two to flatten out pretty much all but the steepest parts of this test route. And then those parts are really short, so I just use throttle. Oh yeah, and that's something worth mentioning. The, the bigger wheels and the firmer tires also mean that it's less rolling resistance for your legs. So it's just easier to pedal. It's not just sparing your battery. When I come to a stop, like I had to fix my camera mount because it's sliding down the tapered bar. But using a little bit of throttle to get started makes it an easy day. And now I'm, I've got zero pedal assist. So I really like that. I don't like bikes that are set up to where the throttle cuts off when you have pedal assist at zero. I want that throttle no matter what my pedal assist setting is. If I don't want the throttle, if I don't want to risk hitting the throttle and having power, I just turn the motor off entirely. So pedal assist level two takes flats and makes it feel like you're riding downhill. But we're about to do an nasty climb they call the roller coaster so i'm going to bump it up to pedal assist four and i'm actually going to peg the throttle too and we're going to see how this does oof a little loose in the gravel there <laughs> kicking the torque on okay getting out of the saddle <sighs> Yay, I did it! Oh my gosh. That's crazy. No, <laughs> this bike is not meant for a climb like that or this. Whew. Last hill, my driveway which is also steep, full throttle, not getting out of the saddle, don't need to, <laughs> going slow, but it's a successful climb. <laughs> and I say that Rad made a successful bike. One of the ironies with the Rad Mission 1 is while it only took me 18 minutes to assemble the bike, it took me about 90 minutes to put on the fenders and the rear rack. The rear fender requires you to remove the rear wheel in order to get to some of the mounting locations. And the hardware locations 
for the rear rack are in places where it's a little hard to twist an Allen key and you're just doing these little twists <laughs> at a time. Without these accessories, the Rad Mission 1 retails for $1,099, but as you see here, you would spend $1,252, which puts it right about the same price as a Rad Runner with fenders. That's why I think the Rad Runner is a perfect contrast to the Rad Mission 1. You get much larger wheels that will track straighter and more smoothly over broken pavement and sidewalk joints. Both the mid-step and high-step are a lot lighter, while having conventional frame styles that are just easier to lift over high curves or carry up and down steps. That conventional frame style also might be less noticeable to thieves once you remove the battery. On the other hand, the Rad Runner comes with a 750 watt peak motor and its 20 inch tires give that motor a big torque advantage climbing hills loaded down with a rider and cargo. Both bikes are available with a myriad of accessories, but the Rad Runner has a few more options for carrying cargo if that's your priority. Price is a big reason behind the popularity of the Rad Runner, so it's no surprise to me that Rad Power Bikes would want to offer people a completely different option in the same price category when configured apples to apples. The benefit with the Rad Mission though is that you can skip the fenders, you can skip the rack, you can skip the kickstand and save a few hundred dollars. Like all Rad Power Bikes, the Rad Mission 1 is backed by a one year warranty and you even get a 14 day free trial to try it out. If you're interested in buying the Rad Mission 1 or anything from Rad Power Bikes, please start your shopping with the link that's in the video description and pinned in the comments below. It'll support the channel when you do. Be sure to subscribe for more videos on e-bikes like the Rad Mission 1. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech and hope to see you next time. Thank you.